Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand spanking new year. Let's hope this one will be a better one than the one we just had. So much crazy, so much cringe, so many lives lost and catastrophes galore. Today's topic is gonna be hashtag me too. Jippo, take us out of light speed. Now, before we start off this video, let's have a few words from my sponsor. This video is brought to you by... Nothing at all! Nothing at all! Nothing at all! <laughs> Stupid sexy Flanders! So, firstly, I think I'm gonna have to clarify some things, because it seems that you just have to explain every little detail that you say so that people don't get upset the very first thing and leave some stupid ass comments down below without watching the entire video and just giving you the mandatory name calling and labeling boy 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 this was the best shit ever why thank you tune that's very good turkey <laughs> over there no oh, fuck your turkey hey blairaka does our empire insurance cover hedgehog gunfire? <laughs> well, thank the force for that, because this is going to be a massacre. But on to the topic at hand. In general, I think the Me Too hashtag thing is a good thing. People who have been abused coming together, sharing their experiences, bond and grow together and heal. Perhaps even give each other encouragement to press charges against their abusers, because we all know that there is a lot of guilt associated with having been abused. Mostly from oneself, but sometimes even from your surroundings as well. Now this part is all well and good. If it had been just that and only that, then I would have seen no problem with this hashtag whatsoever. Unfortunately, this thing has turned out to be something way more. And it's snowballed and it's now become something very dangerous and harmful. Now what do I mean by this? Well, first of all, we see a lot of things coming up in the Me Too hashtag that would hardly be classified as sexual harassment at all. Some sleazy compliment, a grab of the shoulder at work. Yes, sometimes these are just friendly and encouraging grabs on the shoulder. But yes, if it is a superior, then we are treading in murky waters here. If it's constant grabbing of the shoulder and implied that the superior wants something else, then yes, I would deem that sexual harassment. A boss should never use their powers to get their way with someone that is working for them. It is sleazy at best and a crime at worst. <laughs> Sorry, Blaraka, I'm not going to go and have a drink with you. You're not my type. I prefer my women quite a lot less hairy. And besides, you work for me, so that would be inappropriate. We'll have to keep things professional. But yeah, backing up a bit here. Flirting, catcalling, complimenting, asking someone out, looking at someone no matter where you're looking, is not sexual harassment. Wow, holy crap, Biff. Do you kiss your mother with that mouth? You seriously need to work on controlling the Tourette's, man. That was harsh even by my standards. Sorry for the interruption there, folks. But these things seem to have been lumped into the Me Too hashtag, and if something belittles the victims of sexual assault and rape, it is that. I would have been so pissed if I had been a victim of any of these, and then 
someone complaining about someone asking them out and somehow equating the two experiences. Yeah, mad would probably be the least of my emotions at that point. So if we were to remove the flirting, the catcalling and all those other things, would the hashtag be okay then? No, no, it would not. We have seen on multiple occasions people who have been accused of some form of sexual harassment, assault or rape going back 30 years. 30 years! A lot can happen in 30 years. And while it was a terrible offense, no one should even deny that, people do change and I for one think that if you haven't pressed charges in 30 years, you should have moved on with your life. Talk about your incident with others, sure, that's a good thing. It's a good therapy for you and perhaps for others as well. But naming and shaming a person, rightfully or not, after 30 years after the incident, will accomplish nothing. If you however go to the police instantly after the incident, at least you can possibly help future victims of this person. Oh fuck you turkey! <laughs> Now my main concern with the hashtag is the power that it wields. Say what you will, but we should not have mob rule or guilt by popular opinion. Guilty until proven innocent is the worst type of rule of law we can have. It then becomes the witch hunts all over again. Burn people on vague as hell statements. What makes you think she's a witch? Well, she turned me into a newt! A newt. Same deal here. Because here's the crux of it all. If a person is accused of sexual assault or rape, whether or not they're guilty, they will lose everything. Absolutely everything. You could lose your job, your family, and your friends will shun you. And losing everything, especially when you've done nothing wrong, it would not be hard to imagine that it would make said person suicidal. Or picture it as another crime if that helps you put yourself in that person's shoes. We can't let innocent people go to jail. That is why evidence is required to convict someone. But in this case there needs be no conviction at all for the person to be punished. It's a bleak future that is painted here. Another thing is that it's not consistent. If a woman is being accused, then it's not listen and believe. Or if the person is on the right side. Now this brings a whole new level of crazy into the mix. Listen and believe should not be a thing. Now, now, calm down. Don't get your panties in a twist. Let me try and explain what I mean. Listen and trust and verify. What I mean by this is that we shouldn't believe any claim straight off, but all claims should be taken seriously and investigated. But there has to be a counter to all of this. If accusing someone of something that could cost them everything, then making a false allegation, and it's proven to be a false allegation, then there should indeed be dire consequences for the person making the false claim. Now my fear with all of this is that it could be used as a weapon for people who wants to climb the corporate ladder or perhaps as a political weapon to silence wrong thinkers. Or perhaps as a weapon due to some slight or jealousy. Now if you can't see these things then I suggest you take a harder look because it has the potential to be used as this. Another concern is what it's doing for the male-female relationship. Especially with the oh he flirted with me, hashtag me too, and add the I can revoke my consent to sex even after we've had sex thing. We have a volatile mix of things that will add up to men not even wanting to go near women. Not talking to them not interacting with them whatsoever. 
mistletoes should come with consent forms. And you should always have consent forms with you for New Year's, as we just had, so people can sign them before you get your New Year's kiss. Also, just to be on the safe side, record them saying that they agree to getting kissed, so that you can show in social media to keep you safe from the court of popular opinion. Now, I mean, just consider responding to a work email and you word it slightly wrong. Someone gets offended and you get reprimanded. Perhaps you might even lose your job. Now, there are only two ways to combat this thing. People need to stop being so fucking overly sensitive. Sure, if it's a matter of real sexual harassment, assault or rape, then yeah, there is indeed cause for sensitivity. But if just getting asked out or looked at, well then, fuck off. The other way to combat it is with segregated workspaces. Yay, safe space! Where men and women never interact. Perhaps all men in one area and all women in one area, separate from each other. Can you imagine that? Fucking hell, that has to be the most boring and mind-numbing workplaces ever. If nothing else, when talking about this hashtag, I do like that it's stirring the pot in Hollywood. Long have celebs been doing shit behind the scenes and perhaps this will keep people from doing bad shit in the future. Still, not a fan of the naming and shaming though. Okay, now let's end with some choice tweets that I've gathered. And after that bit, more fun with some tweets that Sugar Tits did regarding men and me too. And my responses to them. Women and men all over the world await Pontifex, the Pope, to take the lead and answer for the hatred and violence against women caused by a certain woman's image promoted by the Church since the Middle Ages. The acknowledgement of this by the Catholic Church would help. Hashtag me too. Now, I don't even know what image is being referenced here, but this is partly what I was talking about earlier. How is an image sexual assault or violence? Sure, it may depict these things, but that's about it. I swear to God, if I hear the phrase due process with regards to people who have been accused of sexual misconduct, harassment, abuse, assault, and have been shunned by their communities, I am going to lose my shit. A person is entitled to due process before the government can deprive them of life, liberty, and property. It's a restriction on government. It does not apply to societal shunning. Shun away! Well, fucking be prepared to lose your shit. Now, what if you were accused of killing a baby tomorrow? And even without any proper evidence against you, you lose your job. Your husband leaves you assuming that you have one. <clears throat> and every single one of your friends wants nothing to do with you at all. Does that sound like a just and pleasant thing? You really need to look further than your own nose. I'm not gonna read all this, but here's a dude that has been wrongfully accused of rape and spent two years in jail. Two fucking years that he will never get back. And who knows how many times he dropped a soap? <clears throat> I mean, who knows what horrendous things he had to go through? And the reply, I'm a survivor of sexual assault, your stepfather, and yes, I strongly agree with you, Pierce. Women like these are, end up invalidating, in the eyes of many folks, situations like mine. It's pathetic. Indeed, this is what I was talking about earlier. Some slight or jealousy made this woman make a false rape allegation. And a man spent two years in jail for it. Also, most likely lost all of his friends and his job. But perhaps after the rectification, he might get some parts of his life back. Let's hope so. The New York Times edits its list of prominent men accused of sexual harassment. Hashtag Me Too and PervNATO. Mainstream media once again covering for Democrats and their 
Hashtag war on women. Now, first of all, New York Times, you're supposed to be a respectable media outlet. Publishing a list of people that are just accused of a crime? Since when does that happen other than with this particular hashtag? Every other crime, the perp has his face pixelated, at least until there have been charges filed or they have been arrested. And secondly, even if I think the list shouldn't exist at all, at least be fucking consistent and not just hanging out your political opponents, but hang out your own side as well as yesterday's fucking laundry. Hashtag me too. Yesterday there was a homeless person talking to some co-workers and a security guard and I joined in. Suddenly a man tried to hug me and after that he leaned in and tried to kiss me. As he was carried away he was screaming from the outside I love you I love you. So someone tried to hug you and then tried to kiss you. Holy hell! You're gonna need some serious therapy to get over that assault, won't you? I mean, your incident is just as bad or perhaps even worse than someone who just got raped. Fuck you! This shit does not deserve to be in the Me Too hashtag. Hashtag Me Too. Countless men and women said sexually harassing things at every job I've ever had, but none of that tops the time when an older co-worker kissed me on the cheek. I was under 18 and tried to report him. The manager said I couldn't prove it, even though it was on camera. So everyone said sexually harassing things at every job you've ever had. Ever considered that they might be jokes? Ever considered that if everyone does it, then the problem might not be with them, but with you? Just the question. And a kiss on the fucking cheek. Holy shit. Someone call the damn police. No one wants to be part of the Me Too hashtag. It's a list of people who have been harassed, fired, assaulted, raped, or otherwise had their lives fucked up by men in power. Mm, you do know that this goes two ways, right? Men can be victims of all these things too by bosses who are female as well as male. And if it was just a list of people getting together with common experiences, yeah, no problem. But now it even contains names of possible perpetrators with only the testimony of some person with an anonymous Twitter account. When you work for NHL.com and get told by a local hack you don't know hockey. You qualify. Um... What? So telling someone that they don't know hockey is the same as a person being sexually assaulted, is it? Fucking hell. I think this one has been hit too many times in the head with pucks while doing her job. Please visit metoo.center and add photos of perpetrator. We need to better identify them. And fucking hell, again. They are adding photos of possible predators to this list. Based on accusations alone. Even if, say, 10 people came forward claiming that this person had done something to them, it doesn't make it true. It does make it seem like it could be likely, but without evidence, it still doesn't mean jack shit. For all we know, someone could have bribed these people to make these claims. We just don't know without the presented evidence. But as I said, it should be investigated and taken seriously. Dear train company, I think you might need to inform your early morning commuters why it's unacceptable to watch lesbian sex scenes on their iPad on the train at 8 a.m., especially sitting next to my teenage daughter. You could do something towards me too, hashtag. So, any other scenes would be okay with your teenage daughter then? 
Is she a homophobe? Or perhaps you are? So what if I watch lesbian? So what if someone watches lesbian porn on a train? You and your daughter don't have to look at the screen. As long as it's consenting adults in the video, I don't care what people do. And how is watching lesbian porn in public now a thing in the Me Too hashtag? It just keeps getting watered down. Men routinely belittle women in their lives. By that I mean girlfriends and wives. There are more hashtag me too about that than about sexual or physical harassment. Agreed, and it saddens me a lot that it is. Keep it to the things it should be. That will help the victims here. Anything else will belittle them. And for the record, men get belittled by their girlfriends and wives too. Especially wives. That's marriage for you. That is why poison and marriage is the same word in Swedish. Fellow men, don't be dicks. But that's my favorite thing to be. Then you get to fuck both pussies and assholes. What should I be instead then? A shoe rack? No thanks. And any man who can't stand hearing the truth about the Me Too hashtag without complaining he has it hard is really no man at all. Hashtag harassment is not romance. <clears throat> well, we don't know for a fact that all the things posted in the Me Too hashtag is the truth, do we? And I do agree that complaining that you have it worse when listening to rape victims is a shitty thing to do and shows a strong lack of empathy. But so is complaining about catcalling in the same group. The brain is an amazing thing. One of the most horrific parts of 2017 is waking up every week and wondering, hey, I wonder what sexual harassment I've successfully blocked for a decade or so is going to come flooding into my consciousness. Hashtag me too, hashtag the way we live now. So, because of this hashtag, you're going to become a victim every morning trying to find shit that happened to you a decade or so ago. Things that didn't affect your life up until that point. This is one of my main concerns. If it doesn't affect your life in a negative manner, then don't let it affect you negatively. If it does affect you negatively, get help and fix the issues. So let's end on something funny, because this has been way too serious. Sugar Tits did a series of tweets regarding male characters in Disney movies that could use the Me Too hashtag if applying it as a lot of people do these days. Now I won't be reading these, I will let you read them yourself and then you'll see my reply to them. That's enough for this video. I might go into topics related to, to this hashtag at some point, but for now I've had enough of this. And as an ending bit, let's hope that 2018 will be better than 2017. So much bullshit, it went to the point it's not even funny anymore. But still, there were some highlights every now and then as well. Oh, and I think me, Laura Bones and Tail Feature, 
we'll be having more of the good news streams to counter up the bullshit, so do keep an eye out for that. And I would also like to thank all my new subscribers for getting me over 1k, which is absolutely awesome. And a very special thank you to my lovely patrons, many of who have been with me for many months. Thank you all for believing in me and pushing me to make videos. You guys are a special kind of awesome. And with that, I bid you all farewell. <laughs> I want to see.